we'll start with our sweet cider, which is you know, just apple juice, basically. Um, it's a blend. Jeremy Kitta and Jason Grisanti started their hard cider business in Warwick, New York, out of a passion for the alcoholic apple juice, which the two friends learned to love in high school. So as you can see, the colors changed pretty significantly. Jason's father had purchased this orchard that we were just in, um, and he had started making hard cider as a hobby. And I think we used to sort of get our hands on it and drink it. <laughs> And we talked even then, uh, I guess that was back in around 94, uh, 95, and we talked about how someday we would start a hard cider company. Jason Grisanti was a fruit science major at Cornell University, and roughly a decade ago, the two childhood friends started their own cider business called Doc's Draft. At first, they produced up to 1,500 gallons of fermented apple juice in a year. Their business grew, and today they produce about 100,000 gallons, which is sold in 20 states. They are not alone. Making alcoholic cider is a growing trend in New York State, the country's second highest apple producer. In recent years, the apple industry has struggled against development pressures, increased regulation, and more unpredictable weather patterns. For some orchards, like Dressel Farms, cider could potentially turn a money-losing part of the business into a profitable one. My name is Tim Dressel. I'm a fourth generation apple farmer here in New Paltz, and I've just begun making my own hard cider. Here's why it works. Only nice looking and unblemished apples sell for a profit in grocery stores. Especially being on, on a working farm like, like ours is, um, you do get, uh, in addition to the, the nice fruit that goes to the grocery store and, and, and into the kids' lunch boxes, you get a lot of fruit that doesn't make the grade, and usually that comes as a loss to the farmer. Growing and picking costs are the same, no matter how good the apple is. But small and blemished apples only sell at rock bottom prices. You can't sell an apple that's the size of, I don't even know what that's the size of. What hard cider's been able to do is use those ugly apples um, to make this fermented beverage, uh, which in turn returns higher profits than would have been made if it had been just uh, sold as a cider apple or, or ground up and made into sweet cider. But at the beginning, his grandfather, who still actively works on the farm, wasn't too excited. My grandfather is very traditional and a, a, a big uh, believer in, in the status quo. If it, if it works, it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, my father uh, is uh, sort of like that in the fact that he, he understands that the business got where it is um, by doing what it does, um, but also that uh, you know, times change and, and um, while you know, apples might not be as valuable as they used to be or, or whatever, that um, diversifying is not a bad idea. This year, Tim Dressel produced about 500 gallons of hard cider and has been selling it mainly in a little storefront on his family's farm and in a few local restaurants. And ironically, with hard cider, he can finally enjoy the fruits of his family's farm again. I actually can't eat apples. Um, I always used to be able to, and then in the last couple of years, I developed a fructose uh, uh, allergy, I guess it is. Apples are basically solid chunks of fructose, and I, if I have one bite, I'm, I'm sick for days. Uh, so it's kind of a cruel irony about it, but the lucky thing is when you make hard cider, you ferment out all the fructose, so I can drink that all I want. For the Wall Street Journal, this is Sophia Hollander.